Bwana Yesu asifiwe. My name is Wangeshi. Mwashigadi, I'm born again by the love and the grace of God. It is truly the love of God that sees us true. And I'm so honored to share the word tonight. It's an honor and a privilege to be here sharing God's word in this place. I do not take it for granted. We have been tackling spiritual Christian disciplines as a theme for a while now. True or true? True. And before Harvest Conference last week, by the way, thank you for coming for Harvest Conference. Angalia Jirani, Mwambia, thank you for coming to Harvest Conference. Indeed, our help is here. Amen. So before that, we have been tackling Christian spiritual disciplines. And the Wednesday before Harvest Conference, we tackled the discipline of confession. Do you remember? And today we're going to tackle another Christian discipline, a Christian discipline that has been forgotten in the church, and we want to revive it. Amen? And we're going to be tackling the discipline of biblical journaling, biblical journaling. Amen? And so my topic is the essence of biblical journaling. Now, the goal of every spiritual doctrine is that we are made more like Jesus. That is the aim. That as we practice these spiritual doctrines, as we practice prayer as believers, as we engage in confession one to another, as we practice fasting as a spiritual doctrine, as we look at Bible study, the aim of these practices practiced habitually is so that we may grow to be more like Jesus. I want you to look at your neighbor. I hope you sat next to somebody you like because you're going to talk to them a lot. Amen? Media team number munieke time. Asante. So, look at your neighbor and tell them the aim of spiritual disciplines, the aim of spiritual doctrine is so that we look more like Jesus. Amen. So just like I've said, we're going to tackle the discipline of journaling. And I'm going to explain what journaling is in a minute. In fact, let me give you a sermon outline, what I'm going to do for the next few minutes. We're going to look at what is biblical journaling. We're going to look at the differences between regular journaling we're also going to look at the differences between regular journaling and biblical journaling. We're also going to look at the benefits of biblical journaling. Why should we take up this doctrine? You remember in the beginning I said it's one of the things that has been very lost in the church today. You don't hear many people talking about biblical journaling. So we're going to remind ourselves why is it important that we get back on this Christian doctrine. And then we're going to apply, okay? We're going to learn how to apply it in our daily lives. Amen? Our case study for this is going to be Psalms 86. Psalms 86 is our case study. So if you have your, your Bible, you can just go there because we'll dwell there a lot. Now, let me surprise you if you didn't know. There's nowhere in the Bible that we are commanded to journal. There's absolutely nowhere in the Bible that we are told, journal, write something. But the Bible has examples of examples of journals that benefit us till today. One of the best examples is a man that we all know and all love, King David, who writes half of the Psalms. If you think about the longest book in the Bible, it is the book of Psalms, right? And the book of Psalms is just a combination. It's a compilation of many, many journals. It's somebody sitting down, writing down their accounts, what they are going through, their feelings, their thoughts, and that psalm benefits us. Little wonder that many of us, ile siku yenye umeamka na ujui utasoma nini? Sana sana tunaenanga wapi? Psalms. True or true? When we read, we want to open the Bible, we want to be encouraged, want to find hope, want to find something to read on the go, many times we go to the book of Psalms. So we cannot neglect the doctrine of biblical journaling because we are the generation that has benefited the most from this spiritual doctrine. Amen? 
So what is biblical journaling? Generally, in general terms, journaling is the practice of regularly writing down your thoughts, your feelings, your experiences, and your reflections. It's just generally writing your thoughts, your feelings, your experiences, and reflections. And this is something that is practiced by the secular world. And you go to therapists and they tell you, are you feeling angry? I want you to write it down. Are you feeling like this? I want you to write it down. So what is the difference between regular journaling and biblical journaling? Let us look at the difference so that we can take up this spiritual discipline so that we can look more like Jesus. I want you to look at your neighbor one more time. And I want you to tell them the aim is to look more like Jesus. So the difference between secular journaling and biblical journaling, journaling is this. In secular or regular journaling, the person examines themselves for the sake of self. And I'm going to explain. The person examines themselves for the sake of self. They go on this journey of self-awareness to understand themselves and that ends there. But the aim of biblical journaling is to understand self with the mirror of God. So at the center of biblical journaling, journaling is God. God is the true center of biblical journaling. The problem with regular journaling is this. Umechukua kitabu, umeandika umesema, today I felt sad, today I, 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 and it ends there. But the point of biblical journaling is to bring our attention and our focus on God. That even though I was feeling sad, God was in the middle of it. Even though I am feeling happy, Jesus is the root of all joy. The idea of biblical journaling is to send the mind of the Christian upon Jesus. Little wonder when you look at the Psalms of David, when you look at the journals given by this man that we are studying today, David, there is little of David and more of God. True or true? Many times he'll talk about the greatness of God. Even though he'll talk about his feelings, his thoughts, his emotions, which are important, the aim of David is to just draw attention more to God than unto himself. Amen? So the aim is this, that we record the works and the ways of God in our lives as believers. That is the place of biblical journaling, that we get to record what is God doing in our lives, what are the things and the challenges that I'm facing every day. And so that when I look back on that journal, I am able to say like the psalmist in Psalms 103, forget not his benefits. Amen? So the idea of biblical journaling is to bring together my daily living, the things I'm going through every day, and what I am reading from the word of God. As we think of the simple statement of writing down your thoughts, feelings, experiences, and reflections, the place of biblical journaling is to ensure that my feelings are felt in the presence of God. Let me submit to us today that God is not afraid of our feelings. God is not afraid of your pain. God is not afraid of your anger. God is not afraid of your grief. God is not afraid of your joy. But he wants us to express those feelings in his presence. He wants us to process our thoughts where he is. And so biblical journaling is an invitation to process everything that you're going through on a daily basis in the presence of God. It is an invitation to come and be human in front of God. It is an invitation to draw strength from the God who sees all things. Amen? Because the things that happen to you, they don't surprise God, do they? So biblical journaling, in the true essence of it, is supposed to benefit me as a believer. It's supposed to grow me. I should be able to track 
the journey that I am walking. Where am I coming from? Because writing down our thoughts, our feelings, our inspirations is one part of biblical journaling. The other part is going back to the records and reading. Amen? It is not just enough to write. We need to create time over time to go back and see what the Lord has done. Amen? As we capture in writing the careful thoughts that we have about God and the scriptures and ourselves and the world, those impressions are stamped more deeply in our souls. And this is what I mean. As a generation, I said that we have benefited the most from the book of Psalms and the journals that David wrote. True or true? But I dare say, the person who even benefited the most was David. No wonder God would say this about David, that he has found no man who has looked for his heart like David because he was constantly self-aware, constantly aware of who he was, constantly aware of who God was. And this, in turn, benefited him because he was constantly in a place of seeking the Lord. Amen? So what should biblical journaling comprise of? It should comprise of our thoughts, our feelings, our reflections written down, but it should also comprise of God's word, the undeniable truth of God. It should also combine and, and, and comprise the attributes of God, the greatness of God, the mercy of God, the love of God, and finally, it should also comprise of our prayers to God. Allow me to move into benefits of biblical journaling. As I do, our case study, as I said, will be Psalms chapter 86. Now, the first benefit of biblical journaling, as I had alluded earlier, is self-awareness. Look at your neighbor, tell them self-awareness. Biblical journaling will reveal you to you. If we are honest in how we express ourselves as we journal, as we write down the things that are happening to us, as we write down the things that we are going through, the feelings that we have, as we write those things, it will reveal yourself to yourself. And why is this important? It is important that we have a correct understanding of who we are because without an understanding of who you are, your understanding of God will always be limited. Your understanding of God will always be limited. One of the greatest theologians, if you ask me, his name is John Calvin, he said this, without knowledge of self, there is no knowledge of God. You need to understand who you are so that you can try and understand who God is. You need to understand your sins. You need to understand your weaknesses. You need to understand your limitations as a human being so that you can fully, truly see who God is. As you think of your sinful nature, you will, it will be revealed to you how God is righteous. It will be revealed to you how God is holy. As you look at your limitations, it will be revealed to you how God is the source of your help because God is not limited. It is in the true place of self-awareness that we see God for who he truly is. I want you to read Psalms 86 with me, verse 1. As I said, this is a journal entry of David. In fact, the title of it is the prayer of David. This is what Psalms 86 verse 1 says. Media team, please, please, may I have it in the ESV? Please, please, please. As they're looking for it in the English Standard Version, allow me to read. Hear me, Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and needy. As you read this, one of the ways that David describes himself is poor and needy. And we all know David wasn't poor financially, was he? 
He was a king, right? He had so many things exposed to him. Yet he describes himself as poor and needy. When you think about it, he must be describing his poverty spiritually. He must, he must be describing his need for God. As he's penning this down over a couple of just, you know, we are talking about how David was a janola, janla. <laughs> over a couple of years, he must have come to that realization that he's constantly in need of God, that he's constantly poor in spirit, and so this is his, his request to God, that God would hear him. When he's talking about bow down your ear, this is a statement of humility. The way he approaches God is, a, is in a place of humility. Because he understands at this point that God is great. That it is an honor to have the ear of the king of kings. Amen? True or true? And so one of the ways that he describes himself, as we're just seeing, is poor and needy. I submit to us tonight that pride will find no place in our hearts if we are constantly jungling our experiences with God. When you take a minute to reflect and look at your life, you realize how much you are in need of God. But the place of reflection, I submit again to us, is in the place of biblical jungling. Tapni Bayako a biblical journaling. A journal can be a means by which the Holy Spirit shows us areas of sin or weaknesses, the emptiness of our path, and the insight into our motives. When we are honest and you're writing a journal entry and you're saying, Today, Lord, in the office, my boss. Because you're being raw and honest. Sindio, mimi ni kiulizwa, ni ta command, a die by fire. You're being honest, right? Over time, when you go back, it will start to show you that tata hu kuangi mtu mzuri sana. Unatakanga kuhua watu. Ni masisi za mungu zimetuficha, tusipatane na wewe on bad days. It will reveal to you your motives. It will reveal to you your weaknesses. Many of us, unfortunately, are so blind to our weaknesses because we do not take time to reflect and see who we are, look at who we are. And the place of this reflection is in the place of biblical journaling. Number two, biblical journaling is a means of processing different feelings in God's presence. It is a means of processing different feelings before God. As I said earlier, God is not afraid of your feelings. His desire is for us to process our feelings, our thoughts in his presence. While on this earth, many things are bound to happen there will be joys and suffering in equal measure. What biblical journaling will do to us, it will help us to process heavy feelings in the presence of God. Because one of the things that we can do, just as we keep learning from David, King David, is that we can trust God with our feelings. And there is no better place to process heavy things than with God. By the grace of God, I've been journaling for a while now. I am not that year, but I have been. Allow me to read you, though journals should be private, but for the sake of this teaching, allow me to read you a journal entry that I wrote in my journal on the 26th of November, 2020. Have you allowed me? Have you allowed me? <laughs> and the title of this um, journal on my journal is rest in peace, Guka. After a year of illness and cancer, Guka went to be with Jesus on Monday, 23rd November, 2020. In God's loving kindness, kindness, I went to see him in hospital on Saturday, the 21st of November. I was in that room for not more than 10 minutes. He was in a lot of pain and agony. The Lord has allowed him to rest from the suffering he was in. My heart is broken, yet rested on this one thing, that Guka loved the Lord and served his people. 
So my heart is rested and yielded to God. As we continue to make funeral arrangements and grief, I do so hope, I do so with hope that I shall see him again in that beautiful place where there will be no pain, no sorrow, no suffering, no disease, no cancer, or any earthly evil. The Lord be praised even in this storm. The Lord be glorified through the exemplary, exemplary life my Guka lived. Glory and praise to our God forever. Amen. I had just lost my Guka, as you've read from the journal. And it was a difficult time. If you've gone through grief, you'll realize that grief, even when we are believers, is difficult because separation is hard. I knew my Guka was a believer. I knew my Guka served his, the Lord all his life. I knew my Guka was a man of God, yet it was still painful. And many of you have gone through seasons of pain, seasons of suffering, seasons of grieving. grieving. I suggest to us that we process heavy things with God. Because every time I go back to this, and I don't go back to it often, especially this part, because it brings tears sometimes. You know what it reminds me? That even in storms, God is still faithful. And it also reminds me that storms don't last forever. True or true? And so the place of journaling is so that we can constantly be reminded of who God is. And as I alluded earlier, the point number three, one of the benefits of biblical journaling is that it helps us to be grateful. It helps us to look at God, to reflect back and be grateful. When I read this, I am grateful that I have a God who cares about my pain. I have a God who cares about suffering. I am reminded that God is faithful even when I am going through storms. Amen? Number four, biblical journaling is a means of prayer and surrender to God. I want us to read Psalms 86, verse 6. Biblical journaling is a means of prayer and surrender to God. This is what the psalmist says. He says, hear my prayer, Lord, Listen to my cry for mercy. Verse 7, when I am in distress, I call to you because you answer to me. Verse 6, hear my prayer, Lord. Listen to my cry for mercy. When I am in distress, I call to you because you answer me. Biblical journaling is a good opportunity for us to write the prayers to God that we are unable to speak. Have you ever gone before God to pray and words didn't leave your mouth? Because Does that ever happen? Does it ever happen? Okay, <laughs> it does happen. So when that happens, biblical, biblical journaling is a great opportunity for us to write those prayers that we are unable to speak. It's a place for us to surrender to God in every way, our thoughts, our prayers, our worries, our anxieties, our joys, and everything that is happening in our lives as a form of prayer. Remember when we were talking about what biblical journaling encompasses, we talked about thoughts, we talked, we talked about feelings, we talked about reflections, we talked about God's word, his attributes, and prayer. The reason why prayer is very important in what we are calling biblical journaling is because without prayer and a reflection of God's word, our journaling is as good as that of the world. It focuses you on yourself. There has to be something bigger than my thoughts, bigger than my feelings, bigger than my pain, bigger than my joy. And that thing is God. Look at your neighbor and tell them, there is something that is bigger than your feelings, bigger than your thoughts, bigger than your dreams, bigger than your pain, bigger than your joy, 
And that thing is God. Amen? The idea of biblical journaling is truly to help Christians to not be self-absorbed. I want us to very quickly read Romans chapter 12. Romans 12, just a minute, just a minute. Imepotea, guys. Okay, imepotea. Mtenda mjisome. But in Romans 12, I can see it in my Bible where it is. Iko hapa chini. But in Asema, that we ought to think of ourselves in a way of being sober. We ought to be sober-minded in the way we view ourselves. I want you to ask your neighbor, how do you view yourself? Because that's a challenge. How do you view yourself? When you're writing, when you're penning down, it will bring humility out of us. It will show us that when we think we are something, we really are not. It is truly the mercy and grace of God. And when we think we are nothing, we truly are something because, again, of the mercy and grace of God. It will allow us to practice sober thinking in how we view ourselves. Amen? Another benefit of biblical journaling is accountability in the journey of spiritual growth. Accountability in the journey of spiritual growth accountability in the journey of spiritual growth. As I said earlier, it is not enough to get a book and make it a journal and write our feelings, our thoughts, our emotions. Biblical journaling will start to bear true fruit in our lives when we practice the art of reflection when we go back to what we have written and see where we were in different points of our lives. The thing about it, when you go back to some of the journals that you've written over years, kuna zingine utakuu unangalia unasema, hizi zilikuwa ndoto za ugali, sasa what was happening, hii ni nini nilikuwa nafikiria. You look at it and think, I've come from so far, how was this my thinking? You're able to monitor growth. You're able to remain accountable because as you journal, one of the things that we ought to write is the things that we hope God will work in our lives. It's the things we are trusting God for in terms of cleansing us and making us better. So when you go back, you're able to say, I told myself I'll start reading the word. Have I been faithful? Amen. I told myself in my journal, I'll start to wake up in the morning and seek the face of God. Have I been faithful? It's a place of you to be accountable with yourself so that you may grow spiritually. Remember where we began, that the aim of every spiritual doctrine is to become more like Jesus. And we will be so removed from this practice if we don't take time and practice the art of reflection, the art of self-reflection. If you ask me, one of the reasons why this generation is a generation that we really don't practice this doctrine is because we are the busiest generation. We are fast, we are busy, we are in a hurry all the time, anytime, every time. True or true? We are also the most distracted generation. Today, just today, we were talking with Madam Faith and we were saying how ukingia kwa matatu nowadays, what is everybody doing? They are on their, they are on their phones, very good. And then ukitoka matatu ingia kwa ofisi, kama mtu afanyi kitu, anafanya nini? Ako kwa simu. Then when you get home and you're making dinner, what do people do? News is playing in the background, sindio? Then mkikula, mketi, muna watch your news in another station. So unanzia na ya KTN, then unenda ya NTV, then unenda CNN usiku. I know somebody who wakes up in the middle of the night to catch CNN, and I won't mention them. They wake up in the middle of the night just to see what is happening with the world. 
we are busy, we are distracted. When we do Bible study, we have apps. So life is made very easy for our generation because we have apps for everything. We have an app to remind us to take water, an app to remind us to eat, an app to remind us we need to read the Bible, an app to tell us please exercise, an app to remind us call so and so, an app to remind us message so and so, send money, call your grandmother, and remember to text your wife that you love them. We have an app for all these things, right? But what this busyness and distraction has taken away from our gener generation, I want you to look at your neighbor and tell them because it's a revelation, drum rolls. Do you want to hear the revelation? The art of reflection. Our generation doesn't know how to sit down and reflect, to sit down and think of the day, to sit down and think, how has my day been? How has my week been? How am I? We don't know how to get in touch with our feelings. Because half the time, we don't even know what we are feeling. We carry people's feelings. Wakisema ni maandamano na wamekasirika, tunachukua yo feeling, tunayeka kwa roho, tunakimbia nayo. You've literally inherited somebody else's anger. True or true? Wakisema tunafurahia, we take that feeling. It's not even our own. We absorb it and we go with it. But what biblical journaling will help us to do, and this is my point, it will help us to be reflective. And the point of reflection is to live intentional lives. That you are intentional in your words. You're intentional in how you treat people. You are intentional in the way you think. You have taken everything and held it to submit under Jesus, including your thoughts, including your mind, including your emotion, that we are not moved by everything that comes our way because we take time and we reflect. An, an intentional life is not worth living. A life where you're not intentional, you don't think about who you spend your time with, you don't think about the things that go through your minds. No wonder David would start the book of Psalms 1 by saying, Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit at the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. He must have taken some time to see that it, is, it matters who I walk with. It matters who I stand with. It matters who I sit with. But that will not happen unless we are reflective. You need to sit and ask yourself, why e habit ilitokawapi? Why am I so competitive all of a sudden? And you give an account of your life. Why all of a sudden am I just full of envy? It's because the office that you sit the first 20 minutes of the morning, we talk about celebrities. No wonder we are ungrateful. No wonder we don't understand contentment. Yet Paul talks about godliness with contentment is of great gain. But we spend so much time looking at the lives of others and not reflecting on our own so that we can be grateful, so that we can live intentionally. The Bible says again in the book of Romans that each and every one of us will give an account of our lives. I think the surprise of our lives will be on us. Can you imagine? Because how I see it in my head, indulge me. Angalia Jirani Mwambia, indulge the preacher. How I see it in my head is tutafika binguni and then there'll be this big movie screen. <laughs> and then God atakuwa na Twitter one by one. This is just my mind, okay? And then anasema, Harriet Wangeshi Mwaniki Mwashigadi uko wapi, uko wapi? Alafu natokea anasema, this is your life. Imagine you're standing there and some of the things that Jesus is showing, ata we ukumbuki hizo siku, uko like, eh, hey, wu ni mimi? That was me. You're surprised at your own life. And why wouldn't we be surprised at our own lives? Because we're not living intentionally. You're not intentional in your words. You're not intentional in your thoughts. You're not intentional in your actions. Why? Because we do not reflect. We do not slow down. Reflection requires slowing down. Angalia jirani mwambie slowing down. 
Take a few minutes out of your day. Sit with yourself in silence and ask yourself what Charles Spurgeon would say. Oh dear hands, where have you been today? Oh dear feet, where have you been today? Oh dear eyes, what has been your indulgence today? Oh dear heart, where have you been today? Amen? Biblical journaling is a tool that the Holy Spirit will use to transform us in that he will use these journal pages as an altar for us to reflect and seek the Lord intentionally. The Holy Spirit will use these journal pages as an altar for us to seek God to reflect and live lives that are intentional. Journaling has the appeal of mingling the motions of our lives with the mind of God. It has a way of mixing our motions with the mind of God. If we permit prayer and saturate our journaling time with God's word, it will be a powerful way of hearing God's voice beyond the voices around us, beyond even our own voice. It is through journaling that God, this is my last point on benefits of journaling, it is through journaling that God will cleanse us and sanctify us because we can actively see what we need cleansing from. As you reflect, the first things that you'll see is if you have wrong wrong na wewe, sindio? And as you put it before God, it will be a way, a tool for God to sanctify us, to cleanse us, because we are aware of who we truly are. I want you to look at your neighbor. I really hope you sat with somebody that you like, who smiles at you because to tangalia neighbor, na tumuangalie, na tumuangalie, na tumuangalie tena. As you look at your neighbor, I want you to ask them, do you know your weaknesses? Do you know your strengths? Biblical journaling will reveal you to you. Finally, it will reveal God to us. I want us to look at Psalms 86 verse 10. We're going to read verse 10 and 11. It will reveal God to us. It will reveal God to us. It will reveal the greatness of God to us. And it will teach us to be more like Jesus. The Bible says, for you are great and do marvelous deeds. You alone are God. Verse 11, teach me your way, Lord, that I may rely on your faithfulness. Give me an undivided heart that I may fear your name. One of the greatest people to ever do journaling in the Bible is David. And after years and years of practicing this thing, this is his posture, that he wants God to teach him his ways. I think it's funny when David is saying he wants God to teach him his ways. Because one of the places that we find so much wisdom is in Psalms, right? Many Psalms of David are so, they're full of wisdom. They are full of him advising us on how to seek God, how to hide the word of God in our heart, who to walk with, who to not walk with, who to engage in, who to not engage with. Yet, as we find this journal entry, his constant prayer is that the Lord would teach him his ways. Journaling will reveal God to us. And in turn, our response is that we will want to be more like Jesus. We will want him to teach us how to be more like him. I want you to look at your neighbor one more time. And I want you to tell them, nobody will teach you to be more like Jesus than Jesus. Nobody will teach you to be more 
like Jesus than Jesus. Jesus is the one who will teach us to truly be more and more like him. Very quickly, I want us to go into the application of journaling. We've talked about what is journaling. We look, we've looked at the difference between regular journaling, secular journaling, and biblical journaling. And we've taken some time to understand what are these benefits of journaling. And David is not the only person who journals, by the way. When you read the book of Lamentations, the prophet Jeremiah is literally journaling his disappointment with the fall of Jerusalem. It's literally a book of him journaling his emotions, his feeling towards this great mighty fall of Jerusalem. When you read, about, when you read the book of Jeremiah itself, it has a lot of journal entries from this prophet who lets us in on his emotions, his thoughts, his feelings, and ultimately God. Look at your neighbor, tell them God is the ultimate in biblical journaling. So finally, very quickly, we're going to look at the how of journaling. So how should we journal? How should we approach this great discipline? How should we revive biblical journaling back as believers? How do we revive biblical journaling as believers? Number one, we need to be honest with ourselves. Biblical journaling journaling desires and requires honesty. The ultimate way to do it is you take a book, you write your reflections, you write the songs that God drops in your heart, you write your emotions, you write your thoughts, and a journal is essentially between you and God. In fact, nobody even needs to know that you have one, except for in the place of teaching like here. <laughs> But the place of journaling is between you and God. And one of the hindrances of biblical journaling, what wengi wanasema, mimi si writer, me I don't know how to write, I'm not a writer. Biblical journaling can be for anybody because it is between you and God. As long as you can understand it, understand it and God can understand it, you're good to go. And I promise you, ato ukiwa na spelling mistakes ngapi, God and understand. And understand Kenya Meandika. See, we say that he searches our hearts, then he understands what you have written. The place of biblical journaling will require us to be honest. If you take a journal and everything that you write in your journal is, I had such a beautiful day, so blessed, so highly favored, no pain, just joy. When you take that journal, three months, one year, two years later, it will not benefit you. Because the idea is that when I go back, I will be reminded of God's faithfulness to me in pain, in sorrow, in joy, in anger, in everything. The way that this journal will benefit me is if I am honest with myself and I am honest with God. One of the other things that journaling will require is consistency. Consistency. Journaling is not for a day, it's not for a week, it's a lifetime practice. It's a lifetime practice. As long as you're in this world, this is a tool that will help us to be better. It requires consistency. And what do I mean by consistency? You might not write it every day. You might not write it every week. But surely, we can find some time in a month. True or true? If you can do it daily, great. If you can do it weekly, great. If you can do it monthly, wonderful. But it will require us to fully open ourselves over and over and over again before God and before ourselves. Journaling requires deep reflection and time. It takes time. It takes time. It will require time and deep reflection. You will need to ask yourself some hard questions. Questions like, how do I genuinely feel about this matter? How do I genuinely think about this person? 
What are my genuine thoughts about this difficulty, about this pain? It will require us to be deeply reflective and it will take our time. Finally, journaling will require us to take deep examination. Deep examination. You really do not have to be a writer to start journaling. As long as you're a believer, you have a pen, you have a book, you can write. But it will require you to examine your motives, examine your desires, examine your drive, examine your ambition. Why do you do the things that you do? Look at your neighbor and ask them, why do you do the things that you do? Nataka akupe jibu. Why do you do the things that you do? Amekupe jibu. Kama ana jibu wajakua kijanul. Na kutoka leo mungu watatupea nguvu ya jandling. Amen? The benefit of biblical jandling, I'm almost coming to an end, is that as I review the writings I have made between me and God, I will see the things that God is doing in my life and will do in my life and has done in my life. It is threefold. I need to be able to see the things that God is already doing. I need to be able to see that the things that God will do because God does not change. He's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. If he was, in, if he was faithful in November 2020 in pain, he will be faithful today, right? He will be faithful tomorrow. So it will allow me to see these three things. God's faithfulness yesterday, God's faithfulness today, and God's faithfulness tomorrow. Ultimately, biblical journaling reveals God to us and reveals us to us. It will expose our true knowledge and understanding of God so that eventually we can be more like him. So I want us to stand and I want us to pray for strength to journal, to be reflective. Some of us, what is stopping us from biblical journaling is this idea that we are not good writers. I want you to take a minute and submit that before God. Some of us, the reason this is going to be difficult is because we are so distracted. Distractions right, left, and center. I want you to take a minute and ask God to help you say no to some of the distractions that are in the way of you living a reflective life. Some of us, why this is such a difficult doctrine, why this is such a difficult discipline, is because we don't know how to live slow lives. We don't know how to say, pause, 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 relax. Slow down. Ask the Lord that God would help you to slow down, that God would help you to relax and think of him and be reflective in the name of Jesus. Come on, you can tell God something. Ask the Lord to help you to live an intentional life so that your life does not pass right before your own eyes. We want to live intentional lives. It will help us to be intentional believers not just believers who are thrown by any motion, thrown by anything and everything. And it will make us more like Jesus. So ask the Lord that as we pick up this, doc this discipline, as we pick up this biblical discipline, he will make us to look more like him. You can open your mouth and just ask the Lord to make, he to make you look and be more like him. I want us to pray, but before we pray, I want to ask this question. Because this is one of the most practical disciplines. How many of us do not have a journal? Be honest, you don't have a journal, you don't reflect, you don't write, you just live. When you're doing a come, 
great. How many of us will want to lift your hand and you're telling God, genuinely, I think this is good. I want to be intentional in my life. I want to be reflective. I'm going to buy a book. I'm going to start journaling. Who is saying that? I want to be honest in this place. That's your prayer. That's who I want to pray for. You're saying, I want to live my life intentionally. I want to just get a book. And it doesn't have to be fancy. It can just be a plain book. Lift your hand well. We're just being honest with God so that he can help us to live lives that are intentional and reflective. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you today. We thank you because you have challenged us. You have edified us through your word. We have seen the example of King David and the kind of intentional man that he was. And we desire to be intentional. We desire to be reflective in the way we live. In the way we live. We do not want to just do things for the sake of doing. We do not want just to live lives that we do not understand. Lives that we have not planned out. We want to be intentional with our lives. We want to be intentional with the way we seek you. We want to be intentional with the way we live. So Lord, we pray for strength and grace upon us today that we will pick up this Christian discipline and we will put it to practice. Help us, oh God. There are many distractions that are waiting, oh God, to take this word that we have received away from us. But my Father, we pray that we will be that good father ground that receives the word of God and the word of God bears fruit. My father, would you make us that ground in the name of Jesus? May this word never be taken away from us. From this point on, my father, may we take up this spiritual discipline and practice it so that we can look more like you, so that we can be intentional like you, so that we can be reflective, oh God, in the way that we live our lives. Our desire, my master, is to be more like Jesus. So we raise our hands today in faith. Help us. We raise our hands today. Help us. We raise our hands today. Help us. Receive our praise. Receive our honor. Receive our adoration. For this we pray in Jesus' name.